Hey gang, welcome to your 14th Django tutorial and in this video we'll talk about URL parameters and regex. Alright then, so this is the current state of our article list template and we're outputting the different blogs right here. And at the top of each of these blogs is a link. And the idea is that when we click on this link, we want to go through to a individual blog page and show the rest of that blog. Now we've not set that up yet, but that's what we're going to start doing in this video. So to do this, we're going to have to set something else up in our URLs.py file inside the articles app over here. But before we go into that, I want to explain how this URL structure should work. So if we click on this Django rules, then I would like the URL to look something like this forward slash articles forward slash Django hyphen rules like so. And that URL will show us this individual article. Or if it's this, then it would be forward slash article forward slash Django Nautic hyphen opening. So this thing right here, this Django hyphen rules or Django Nautic hyphen opening, this looks very much like the slug that we created inside our model. So if we take a look at this model over here, we have a property called slug. And the slug, if we take a look inside the admin, looks something like this. It was a URL friendly string. So instead of spaces, there would be a hyphen and it would also take out the capital letters and replace them with small letters, even though it doesn't really have to do that. So this is essentially the URL for this article and we'll use that slug, right? So the way we have to do this in our URLs.py file is to use what's known as a named capturing group. So what does that mean exactly? Well, the first thing we really need to do is set up another URL for our article detail page. That will be a page which shows the details of one particular article. So we'll say URL and then the first parameter is the raw string with our regex in. We'll leave that for now and come back to it in a minute, but then we'll send them to views.article underscore detail. So we don't have that view function set up just yet. So let's do that. First of all, we'll go to views and below this, we'll create a new function and this function will be called article underscore detail. And that will take in the request object right here. So ideally for now, let's just return a HTTP response. And in order to do that, we'll need to import it at the top. So from Django.http, we'll import HTTP response. And we're only doing this for now until we figure out how to set up these URLs for individual articles. Later on, we'll be rendering a whole template. For now, we'll just be returning some kind of HTTP response. So, how do we then set up this URL? This is the bit that we're struggling with, the regex for our article. Now, we don't have to write the forward slash article bit. That's already taken care of in our main URLs file over here. When we said forward slash articles include the article URLs. So we don't have to worry about that. That's already included. We just want to worry about the next part. So this slug bit right here. So this is the bit that we need to define as a named capturing group. And the way we do that is by first of all in here saying, okay, this carrot means it has to go at the start and then open up our parenthesis, then a question mark, then P and then in the angle braces like that, we say what we want to call this group. And this will be called a slug. And this name is for the benefit of the views over here because we can take in this parameter slug right here. Okay. So we capture that variable inside the URL right here using this thing, right? We capture that variable and then we can send it through to the view as a second parameter. Now, after we've said, okay, we want this to be a named capturing group right here. After we've said that we need to say after this slug bit right here, what we expect this to be. Now, in my eyes, this URL could be anything, any kind of letter or number and hyphen. So the way we do that in regex is by opening up our square brackets. Then inside we say 
backslash W to say any kind of letter. So that could be A through to Z um, in lowercase or uppercase and any number as well as any underscore. And then also it could include a hyphen. So we have to pop that in as well. We also want to say this could be any length of numbers or letters at all. We, you know, there's no limit on this. This could be like 50 characters, this URL. So we want to put a plus sign at the end over there to say that this can be any length as well. Finally, we want our forward slash at the end and then we want the dollar sign. So just to run through this again, this means it must come at the start and this means it must be at the end. So we're just containing the regex in the middle. Then to create a named capturing group, we have to say parenthesis question mark P, then in angle brackets, the name of the thing that we want to capture. This can be anything you want, but I'm calling it slug. We don't have to name it slug. We can name it A, B, C if we want to, and that will be passed through as A, B, C down here. But we're naming it slug because at the end of the day, that's what it is. We're naming this slug, and then we're saying, okay, well, what can this slug be in the URL? Well, I've said right here that it can be any kind of letter, A through Z, or number, or underscore. That's what backslash W means inside the square brackets. Then we've also added in the hyphen, which means hyphens can be included in this URL as well. And then we've added on the plus outside the square brackets to say, okay, well, this thing right here can be any length. It's not just one character, any length. So when a user types in all of that into the URL over here, then all of that bit, this bit here will be captured into this variable. And this variable will then be sent to this function over here. And we can receive it in that function as the second parameter. We've called it slug. So now let's send that response, the slug that we capture to the user and see if this works. So if I go to forward slash articles, forward slash Django rules, press enter, then it looks like we're going to get an error. And I think that's because we misspelled something somewhere. Okay, that's because we have an S on the end over here. It should be article detail. Let's try this one more time. So now we get this thing over here, this slug parameter that was from this thing. And it doesn't matter what URL we go to. So if I put again over here, then we get Django rules again, which is the slug sent to us back in the browser. We can put a number on there. This still works. Okay, so now we've done the first step. We've captured where the user wants to go to. And we have access to that now inside this view function over here. So now we have access to that slug. I suppose what we could do is take that slug, query our database to look for an article which has that slug. And if it does, then we'll retrieve that article, send back a template with that article so the user can see it. Does that make sense? So that's what we'll do in the very next tutorial.